We want to begin uh, tonight with a uh, prayer request uh, from Dorothy Stanford. This is Lisa Hodgins' mother. Uh, as most of you know, she's in uh, the Corinth Hospital, Magnolia Hospital, with some pretty serious health issues. Stephen visited with her yesterday, and during that visit, she indicated uh, her desire to make sure that her life and her relationship with God was as it should be. Uh, they looked at 1 John 1, 7 through 9, and, and Stephen prayed with her at that time. But he and Lisa request a prayer on her behalf that uh, God would comfort and strengthen her, uh, both in her body and, and soul. And we want to honor their request as well as her request tonight in praying for her uh, at this particular time. Let's pray together. Father, we're so thankful uh, tonight for all that you do for us. We're thankful for uh, your many, many blessings. We're thankful that, that you love us the way that you do and that you take care of us the way that you do. And tonight we pray a special prayer for Dorothy Stanford. Know, Father, that she is uh, facing serious health issues, and we pray that those may soon be resolved, that she may have the health that she desires. We honor her request tonight, God, in asking you to forgive her of things that are wrong in her life. We pray that uh, she may have uh, comfort and peace knowing that her relationship and her uh, life before you is as it should be. And so, Father, we, we pray on her behalf tonight. And we pray for Stephen and Lisa and the other family members as they care for her and take care of her and pray that you would bless them as well. Thank you for blessing us the way that you do and for making this possible and giving us the hope that we have. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. We want to welcome everyone to our Wednesday evening service. We're glad that you're here, especially if you're one of our, our new Northeast students. We're, we're especially glad that you're here uh, at the beginning of a new school year. We have several announcements before we get into our devotional time together. Uh, funeral arrangements for Helen Jones, a uh, former member here. Uh, visitation will be from 5 until 8 tomorrow afternoon at Macmillan Funeral Home. The uh, funeral service will be Friday at 11 o'clock at Macmillan Funeral Home. Also, though, those that are sick, Craig Glenn uh, is in Nashville and seems to be improving. Sue Glenn uh, is in the hospital in Nashville also. She will be transferring to Landmark later on this week. Uh, Maggie Hester is in the Methodist Hospital in Memphis, and uh, she will be transitioning to rehab uh, pretty shortly. Uh, and Greg uh, told us about Dorothy Stanford, so remember her. And also Brandy Gann uh, had uh, outpatient surgery on her leg, and she is at home at this time recovering. Food pantry and clothes closet will be open tomorrow uh, at 9 o'clock. The item for this week is dried beans. Uh, we will be taking pictures again for the new directory uh, after services on Sunday morning. Uh, please be sure to, to get your picture made for the new directory if, if at all possible. Senior Adult Rally, and that will be on Saturday, August the 25th. Uh, there are still some places where we need folks to sign up to help for that. And we're glad tonight to announce that uh, Rob and Jessica Smith are placing membership with us, and they've been with us for, for a while, and they will be uh, part of our family here. And they have one little daughter, Emma Rose, and they live on uh, uh, West College, 303 West, West, yeah, West College Street, Apartment C. And also tonight, Kelsey Hodgen, uh, is making it official that she's with us and Kelsey's daughter of uh, Stephen Hygen. So we're glad to have all of these placing membership with us uh, and we hope that they'll be with us for a long time. That's all of our announcements. Uh, join in as, our, as we have our song service. First song tonight will be 538. 538. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth stanzas. I hope it's still come that we bless that Jesus Lord.
please. And our loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we are so very thankful and humbled for the opportunity to gather here this evening. This mid-service, this midweek Bible service, Father, we are so very thankful. Lord, we, we pray that everything that's said and done here tonight will be pleasing and acceptable in your will, Father. Please be with us, Father, as we open up your word, study another portion of it. We pray that we may take what we learn, apply it to our lives, become better Christians, better examples for everybody we come in contact with, Father. Lord, we're so very thankful for all the blessings you've given us, all the physical blessings, especially, Father, for all the spiritual blessings. Lord, we also want to thank you for the ability to petition you in prayer. Lord, we want to pray for all those who are hurting, those who are sick, the families who's lost loved ones, Father. You know their names and what they need, Father, better than we know how to ask. Lord, we also pray for those who may be hurting spiritually, those who have never known you, Lord, or those who have wandered away. We pray that we as Christians and brothers and sisters in Christ may say the things that would bring them back to you, Father. Lord, we thank you most of all for your precious Son, for your willingness to send him, Lord, and his willingness to die for us. We are eternally grateful. Father, we pray that you please forgive us for we fail you. In Christ's name we do humbly pray. Amen. If you will, mark your song books to 948. That will be the invitation song, 948. After this song, uh, we'll have the devotional. 548. 548. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll be reading from Second Timothy, verses, verse, Second Timothy, chapter four, verses six through eight. 
for I am already being poured out as a drink offering at the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, here is laid up for me the crown of righteousness with the Lord of righteousness. Judge, judge will give me, give to me on that day and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Good evening. First of all, I want to say you handled that beautifully. Now, I want to make sure you understand he didn't get up here unprepared. He handled that fantastically with a lot of grace, I thought. Uh, it's just so you know what's going on. Uh, he wanted to make sure, first of all, he was trying to be graceful to me because he thought I messed up. He said, what verse was that? And I told him. And then he came over and said, this Bible's missing a page. So what do you do when you, you back up and you go to the next source? So he handled that well. said, Listen, there's no page here. Okay, well, we need to move that one aside. Uh, but I appreciate him looking out for me. Um, if you handle that well. I told Aaron at the end uh, of Sunday night, I told Aaron that of all the lessons, I don't know who you might have been preaching to Sunday night, but I know you were preaching to me. Uh, attitude is so very important, and that has been something I've struggled with all my life. But as I think about that, as, I, as God blesses me to live and to grow and to, to be able to do some things in his service um, through his grace and mercy, I have discovered that not only is attitude important, but mindset, frame of mind is very important. Uh, I don't know about you, but I know that I, I think I missed the boat in one ha at least half of the boat because... Uh, I, I, I tried very hard to think the way a Christian ought to think and think Christian things and then be prepared to do what I'm supposed to do when faced with opportunities and faced with obstacles and faced with temptations and, and all of those things. And sometimes I, I, God helped me to do that well and sometimes I didn't allow him to help me enough. But I had discovered that it's more, I believe that's only half of it. That it isn't just thinking the right thoughts when called upon to do so, but it's coming into every situation with the right frame of mind, with the right mindset, having made some preparation ahead of time to be prepared to think those thoughts and to, to, to act the way God wants us to act. So with that in mind, I, I'd like to ask you a question. How do you think about God? How do you think about God? What is your mindset as far as God is concerned? It's interesting how things seem to uh, stay with us over the years. Some things we can't remember and can't forget. In fact, I, I, I can't remember uh, what seat I sat in in chapel, but I do remember being in chapel at Freed Hardeman. So sometimes, uh, sometime between the years 1990 and 1994, um, I sat in chapel and heard Jesse Robertson talking, and he said something that I thought was pretty interesting, and so I wrote it in the cover of, of my Bible, and I kept it there. And then over a course of time, it found its way into a devotional, so I'd like to share that with you tonight and think about it for a minute. One of the things that he said that I remembered and wanted to remember, so I wrote it down, how we think about God is, very, is a very important part of determining many things in our lives. How we think about God will determine what we want in life and how we seek those things. It will affect our goals, it will affect how we see the world, and it will affect how we see ourselves. And I remember writing that down all those many years ago and forgetting about it and then finding it later in the, written in one of my Bibles and then thinking about it and, and, and thinking about it some more and studying a lesson on it. How do I think about God? Very quickly, three things. How I think about God will affect my goals. 
In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6-8 through 8, that was read to us a moment ago, Paul said, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Now, I want you to think for a minute. Sometimes if we're not careful, we may see the Apostle Paul and feel very, very good about him, be very encouraged about his faithful life. But maybe if we're not careful, we're thinking about Paul from the perspective of here Paul is and he's finally gone as far as he can and, and, and the devil's finally got the upper hand or he's finally reached the end and, and Paul is just at his end and he says, well, I fought a good fight and I'm ready to go. But that's not what I hear there. That's not what I hear at all. In fact, when I read that, I hear Paul's mindset in saying that I've been pouring out myself as a drink offering and now that cup's going to be completely emptied and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I have finished the course. I have fought the good fight. I have, uh, and I like the way the New King James reads in the ESV when it says there that I have finished the race. Too many times we're more concerned about being ahead in the race or winning the race when neither of those things are relevant to who we are as Christians, but simply finishing the race. It's already been won. Our goal is simply to finish it. But I want you to see here that Paul had a goal. His goal was to pour himself out as an offering to God. Kind of puts into perspective to me Romans 12 and verse 1 about the sacrifice. And I, I know this is not a sermon, so very quickly, I, I, I was thinking this afternoon, I'm thinking about some of you, and I won't embarrass you by calling your names, but a lot of you who are older, I want to be careful because I was told the other day that I called some of you elderly and not to do that anymore. Uh, but I'm thinking about some of you and some of the things you do, and it makes me think that here you are at the end of your physical life and, and that's you're at the you're in the twi those years and you're getting slower and you have aches and pains and have to visit the doctor a lot but for some reason it seems that you are more focused spiritually than anybody I know that you're doing more spiritually than I ever thought about doing when I had the energy to do it and that's exactly what Paul said his mindset was I have a goal my goal is to pour and pour and pour until my cup is empty and I have finished, and I've crossed that finish line. That's not just where I want to get to someday. That's my goal. But how I think about God not only will affect my goal, it will also affect how I see the world. In Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 18, listen to what Paul said there. Let's read through verse 21. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly and their glory is their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like this, His glorious body by the power that enables Him to be subject to all, uh, to subject all things to Himself. We love to read that verse and think about what Jesus will do for us. But I want you to think about how, what he does for us there. How I see God affects how I see the world. When Paul saw the world, he wept. He wept because he saw them as enemies of the cross of Christ. Here are people who ought to know better. Here are people who ought to be obeying God, who ought to be praising God, who ought to be submitting themselves to God. They are walking as enemies of the cross of Christ. It made Paul sad. And it made him cry. And he understood that they're minding earthly things, but I don't belong to them. Sometimes if we're not careful, we have empathy and we have uh, a desire to uh, empathize and even uh, idolize the world to the point we want to be as close to them as we can instead of realizing they're enemies of the cross of Christ. And tears should run down our faces because we're not like them. How I see God will affect how I see the world. It'll affect my goals. And then number three will affect how we see ourselves. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16, one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. So we do not lose heart. You know, I find that interesting that Paul did not say that as a, a, future, uh, as a future tense phrase. 
Hey, let's don't lose heart. He said, we do not lose heart. Not for a second. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. How I see God affects how I see myself. What I mentioned a moment ago, what encourages me most about seeing those of you who are indeed on the senior citizen side of somebody's piece of paper, you have filled your plates with spiritual things and it encourages me to see that even though you have to stop and rest, even though you have to take precious time out of your schedule to go see a doctor when you'd rather not, you have a view of heaven that I hope I have someday. And that's what Paul's talking about. When I see God that clearly, it makes me think of uh, Matthew 5 and verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They can see God plainly. And Paul said that even though our outer self is getting further and further and further away from what it used to be, we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to what we want to be. And that's God's. How we see God affects how we see the world, how we see ourselves and our goals. And I'm sorry that almost became a sermon. But mindset is important. How do you see God tonight? Tonight as we sing this invitation song, rest assured that God sees you. He sees you as someone who needs to come out of the world and obey the gospel. He sees you as a child who has wandered who needs to come home. Or he sees you as a child who's doing the best that you can to serve him. And he loves all three of those. He will embrace those who repent. He'll embrace those who will obey. And he'll encourage those who keep trying. If you need to respond tonight and we can help you in any way, please come while we stand and while we sing. closing prayer let's bow please <clears throat> our most gracefully heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful day you given us we thank you for allowing us to come together tonight and worship with friends and worship you heavenly father and learn more about your word be with the ones tonight that's been mentioned sick heavenly father restore them back to their health be with the ones that's lost loved ones and comfort them in the only way you know best <clears throat> bless us all heavenly father and forgive us where we fail you Bring us back the next appointed time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.